Never has it been more important to get outside into our neighborhoods and into our nearby nature and look at the trees and look at the birds and look at the new signs of spring. So I know all of you will agree with me when I say nature is so important in our lives. Um, and you know, here at Nature Canada, we're all about getting kids like you and your families to try and discover the nature in our own backyards, and then to go beyond that and to try and restore and defend that nature we love. So that's still here for all of our friends and all of our younger brothers and sisters as well. So we wanted to start off the morning for you with a quick song. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to bring in two of my friends and colleagues who you see on the video. Uh, we have Ted, who's wearing the nice sweater with the birds. Maybe you could give them the kids a wave, Ted. Uh, oh, <laughs> perfect. Uh, so we have Ted. Ted is something is called our naturalist director with Nature Canada. And joining him, we have Ben, who's wearing the blue shirt and just gave you the wave. And both Ted and Ben are part of an urban birds team that we have with Nature Canada. And so they work a lot with birds in our cities. So I'm going to hand it over to them and I know they have a really great song for you uh, all about birds. Thank you, Hillary. Lovely introduction on this beautiful spring day as the birds are coming back. We could resist the idea of playing a song for you about birds. It's a song by a, a group called the Eels and uh, it was written by the, uh, the lead singer of the Eels for his mother, who was a bird watcher. Um, so I hope we hope you enjoy this. I can't look at the rocket launch, the trophy wives of the astronauts. I won't look at birds. I don't care for walking downtown. Crazy auto car gonna mow me down. Look at all the people like cows in a herd. Well, I like birds. If you're small and on a search, I've got a feeder for you to perch on. And on a search, I've got to be the for you to perch on. I can stand in the line at the store. The mean little people, they're such a bore. But it's all right if you act like a turd, because I like birds. If you're small and on a search, well, I've got a feeder that you can perch on. Ben. Ben. If you're small and on a search, I've got a feeder for you to perch on. That was amazing, Ted and Ben. Thank you so much. Um, I hope everyone who's watching it is also clapping or waving your hands or, or at least that you were dancing along to that song. Um, I know we have been lucky on the Nature Canada team to hear it a number of times and every time there are people on our video calls dancing in the background. And I think we're probably singing along um, at this point. So thank you again, uh, Ted and Ben, for that. No, you're welcome. Thank you, the Eels, for making that song. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. And so, I mean, the title of that song is I Like Birds. Uh, so that seems pretty self-explanatory. And, and the fact that you two are singing it, I presume you two like birds as well. Is that correct? Absolutely. I'd Love say birds. that's a pretty good statement. 
Yeah, I figure if you are working on the urban birds team with Nature Canada, a love of birds is, is probably a necessity. Um, and, and so I'm curious, and I actually wore my earrings today because they kind of remind me uh, of a bird's wing a little bit. Um, and I like the, the glitter they have because I know there's some birds who, who do like shiny things as well. Um, so I'm curious for all of our kids and campers who are watching who also like birds, I think they would be interested to know which, which one of, of the birds are your favorites. Ben, why don't you go first? All right. Um, so I actually have two favorite birds, uh, one that I see more often than the other. Uh, so I'll start off with that one. And let me just share my screen. So the first one is actually the cardinal. So is this all good? Yes. Yeah, we can see the bright red bird there. So the cardinal is definitely up there, one of my favorite birds, mostly because I see it all the time. There's actually a, a couple of uh, northern cardinals that are nesting near my apartment right now. So I can hear them from my bedroom window. Uh, it's actually really nice. And then when it comes to a, a bird that's a little bit more rare, you know, maybe a little bit more cool for some of the other kids, uh, it's called a peregrine falcon, which is this guy right here. Ooh, look at that stare. Mm-hmm. Quite the stare. These these guys are actually really cool because they go extremely fast. So one of their really cool, uh, I don't want to say characteristic, but the way they act is that they'll dive bomb and then they'll go up to speeds of, I think it's 300 kilometers an hour, which is really, really fast. Wow. That's crazy. Amazing. Yeah. Ben, I love when you were talking about the Cardinals, you said that you could uh, hear some of them from your apartment. Um, and I think that's really cool for kids to know as well as sometimes we think of animals and birds only existing in, in a forest, like in Disney movies. But what you're saying is that we can see beautiful birds like this in our city, right? Exactly. I live really close to downtown Ottawa. So uh, there's a small park near me and there's a lot of trees in, the, in my neighborhood. So I get lucky enough to have a decent amount of birds just nesting around here and I can listen to them in the morning or during sunset, and it makes my day most nights. Mm -hmm. That's really beautiful. And, and Ted, I know you have stories of, uh, can you can you share the story of, of hearing birds in your dreams and what happens when you wake up? <laughs> yeah, I, I can do that. Um, can I quickly mention my two favorite birds? I, I suppose so, yes, that is important. <laughs> okay, um, well, one, one of them is uh, this one here. I'm seeing Ben's screen right now. Oh, that, I'll stop yeah. that. Ah, okay. <laughs> so uh, one of them is this one right here. Um, everybody recognizes the, a blue jay. Um, I love blue jays. I, my, my wife probably loves them even more than me. Um, she uh, came to Canada about 10 years ago from South America and uh, just finds these the most, most beautiful birds. Um, they have so many different colors of blue in them. And of, of course, blue isn't a real color. It's actually a, a, a way the light reflects off the feathers and we see these in our eyes. Um, but there's so many different shades of, of blue. And what I like about blue jays, there's lots of things. They belong to the family of birds called the corvids. Not to be confused with COVID, the virus. The corvids it has that extra R in it. And they're, they're considered probably the smartest family of birds on earth. They're very, very smart, very clever, very good at figuring out where the danger is and surviving and very social. And the blue jays are so social that, you know, we have names for different groups of birds. Um, and the name for a flock of blue jays is called a party, a party of blue jays. I think that's very appropriate because whenever you see them, they seem to be having a lot of fun. And the other one, of course, is this little guy, the chickadee. That's when I squeeze it, it makes that sound. And this is when I make the sound. So I can actually make a whistle like a chickadee. And uh, I've got a little nest box. I live in a, at the top of a house. I have a nest box right outside on my balcony. Maybe when Ben's talking, I'll scoot out there. And I have a pair of chickadees that have decided to make their home in there and raise a family. And it's so exciting. Um, so that's really neat. 
And that, getting back to Hillary's question, I um, yeah, I've, I've loved birds all my life and been interested. My interest started as, if you remember, I have a little bird book that I received when I was eight years old. So I would say uh, it was given to me because I already was really into birds when, by the time I was eight. Um, but often I will dream about birds. I love them so much and they're so, such a big part of my life. I'll dream about them. And sometimes those dreams are, are triggered by an actual bird singing outside the window or outside my tent. And I will, in my dream, be hearing the bird and identifying it and enjoying it and wake up, wake up to that sound of the bird that I've identified in the dream being right outside my window or outside my tent. So that's a pretty cool thing when that happens. Yeah, that is very cool. Um, and I, I love that the blue jay is one of your favorite types of birds uh, as well, Ted. It reminds me a few weeks ago when it was still winter outside, uh, I was at Gatineau Park uh, hiking into one of the cabins and, and campers, maybe you have walked into one of those really nice camps or uh, cabins in Gatineau Park and they have bird feeders positioned outside. And on this weekend in February, you could sit there quietly on the park bench and watch as, you know, five, six, seven different blue jays came flying in from all directions. And it was a really nice sunny day. And so the sky was blue and the light reflecting off of the feathers of the blue jays was blue as well. And so that was, uh, that was very cool. Um, and Ted, I see we are outside now. So what are you going to show us? I am. I've got the little, the nesting box right here. I'm going to show you and you can see there's stuff kind of sticking out of it. I'll give you a close up and then we're going to, I'm going to get away from it because I don't want to bug these guys too much right now. Okay. And so what are we looking at in the small circle, Ted? Yeah, so that small circle is this is a very small opening. It's about a, an inch and a quarter. So it's a very small opening and it prevents other larger birds from getting in there. And there's kind of fluff in there. So they've been collecting nesting material. And basically they make a nice big ball. They use a lot of moss and they use other things that they can gather uh, little bits of uh, flower, uh, flowers and little bits of anything they can find that's very soft and they stuff it in that in that thing and they make a nice sort of a nice warm insulated nest inside and they haven't started laying their eggs yet the female they're still busy building the nest but probably within a week or two she'll be uh she'll be laying eggs in there and uh and then i won't be out on my balcony very much i'm going to give them some physical distancing just as uh, we're doing socially now so that they can raise their family I, I love that. And I love the idea of them gathering all of these little soft pieces to build their nest. I mean, that reminds me of, it almost makes me wonder if campers, if you could gather all of the different soft things from around your house, maybe a blanket and a pillow and take the pillows off of the couches and build your own nest like the chickadees. That could, uh, that could be kind of cool. And I might have to do that here in my own apartment. Um, so thank you for inspiring that, Ted. What a, that's a very cool idea. I think I'll do that after our call. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have a lot of time at home these days. We might as well build our own nests, I think. Correct. Uh, so I want to talk, I want you two to talk a little bit more about bird song, because of course you two are singing together, but birds also sing, as Ben, as ben was saying. So can one of you tell us more and tell the campers more about what birds are trying to communicate when they sing? Sure. Ben, do you want me to do this? Uh, sure, go ahead. Okay. Well, um, birds, birds sing for different reasons. Um, but one thing we notice in the, in the spring, which we're, we're in now, is that there's a lot more bird song than in the fall. And the reason is the spring is the beginning of the breeding season for birds. And um, usually in most species of birds, it's the male that does most of the singing. Um, not entirely, but uh, uh, mostly the male. And the male is singing for a couple reasons. Um, one of those reasons is to attract uh, a mate, uh, to attract a female. So the, the males sometimes have beautiful songs for that sometimes, like the chickadee is that beautiful whistle, the cardinal is a whistle as well. 
I've heard someone tell me the chickadee when it goes, it's going, love you. So it's kind of a nice way of thinking about that. Um, so they're trying to, they're trying to attract a mate, um, but they're also defining their territory or their space where, so their space is, their territory is an important concept for birds because when they're breeding, when they're raising a family, um, so the family comes out of the female lays eggs and they hatch into little, little nestlings and eventually they leave the nest as fledglings and, um, you know, then they start their own independent life. But when they're in the nest, the, the parents have to find enough food for them. They have to make sure that nest is in a safe place. They have to find, they have to be sheltered. So the territory has to contain all the essential elements for their survival, space, food, shelter, water. They've all got to be there. That's their habitat. So that's one of the, one of the functions of song is to define that territory that they need to be able to raise a family. And it's one of the reasons why they'll do that. And in a way, you could say that instead of fighting with their neighbors, they sing at their neighbors. That's the way they resolve their conflict. It's through singing, which is a very nice concept. I wish humans would do that more. Don't you agree, Ben? Oh, yeah. I would be amazing at singing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, and that reminds me a little bit of what we have been seeing in our neighborhoods, where sometimes people are going out in the evening and clapping or singing for all of the workers who are who are really um, working very hard in these weeks to keep us safe and keep us healthy. So in a way, we're almost learning something from the birds, I think. So. Yeah, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. um, ben, you were telling me that you can actually make some bird song as well. So I'm wondering if you could make a sound and then we can see if Ted could guess oh, maybe. which bird that is. No pressure. I'm not, I'm not a guru like Ted, so I can't do all of them, but I can do a few. All right. Wow. That is a song of summer for me, of being in a canoe on a quiet lake in the, the, the Laurentides in, in central Quebec or in northern Ontario. One of my favorite birds, one of the emblematic birds, the bird that is on our $1 piece of Canada. Am I right, Benoit? You are correct. The common loon. Love it. Very good. Lots of fond memories at night, just hearing those birds. Oh, yeah. I mean, me too. It's, it's spectacular. They can make great sounds. That was very good, by the way. Yeah, thank it, was, you. it was definitely good. You've practiced that one before, Ben. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, and so just in talking about birds, I wanted to share my screen for a moment because I know for all of you campers at home who are now going to, as soon as the session is done, run outside and try and spot birds in your backyard, I wanted to show you that we have a few different uh, books on the Nature Canada website that can help with this. Can you see my screen okay, uh, Ted and Ben? But, Absolutely. So you can see we have naturecanada.ca, which is our website, and we have this beautiful, Ted, which bird is this actually? Do you know? I do know. I know that's, that's, the, that's the favorite bird of, of the executive director of Nature Canada. Um, yeah, I think because it's a baseball team that he likes, actually, but it's a beautiful bird. It comes here in the summertime, and I, I think some of the campers know what it is. Quickly write it down on a piece of paper before I tell you. It is a named after a city in the United States. It's called a Baltimore Oriole. And uh, okay, we seem to have temporarily well, lost Baltimore Orioles. Oh. Oh, we lost you for a second, but I'm actually just going to scroll down and show yeah. campers these these bird books. So again, if you go to our naturecanada.ca website and this URL, and perhaps I will see if Dustin can send this link to campers after, you can find a whole bunch of different uh, eBooks 
So electronic books that you can enter your email address and then download a Backyard Birds ebook. Um, you can get a Simply Songbirds ebook to learn about all of the songbirds found in Canada, all of the sparrows in Canada. And then because it was so popular, we even have a second Backyards Bird, Backyard Birds book. Um, and I think that would be perfect for, for a time like this as well. So again, these are all found on the naturecanada.ca website. Um, and so Ted and Ben, I know we only have about three minutes left. And so I just wanted to ask you um, sort of one, one more question. Um, we know that sometimes birds can be in danger in our communities and, and here in our cities. So can you quickly go through a few of the things that, that can maybe hurt birds and what kids can do to help them? Sure, happily. I'll mention a few. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right, good. Um, so there are, there are lots of things that we can do to help birds, um, starting with. Um, we can help birds by keeping our pets um, inside, especially cats. You know, cats wander freely. Um, they, it's their nature to, uh, to eat, eat birds and small mammals and stuff. So much better for the cat to, uh, to, to, to learn to live inside. And it just needs a lot of love and play and, and stuff, and it, it will be fine. Uh, windows can kill lots of birds because birds don't see glass. So it's important to make windows visible. Not all windows, but if there's some that you've noticed birds are flying into, you can do that. You should also not put a bird feeder um, sort of in that range of the window where, where the birds were. I come to the feeder, something scares them, they fly and they hit the glass. So a feeder should be at least either less than a meter from the window or more than five meters from the window. Um, and, and then you can also make your yards much more interesting for birds, uh, with shrubs and, and native plants and things like that. So those are some ideas from me, Ben, you've got anything to add to that? Um, if you want to help maybe the success rate of your bird feeder, you want to have some certain feed sometimes. Uh, I think for the Ottawa region, the best feed that you can put in is sunflower seeds. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that and would water. probably... water. Yes, water as well. They do need to drink. Hmm. Yeah. It's important to stay hydrated for all of us, humans and birds. We have a lot more in common, I think, with, uh, with birds and wildlife than we think. It, it's so clear when you have conversations like this. Um, so, well, perfect. Uh, Ted and Ben, I think we are just about out of time. And I know uh, campers that Dustin and Chris have lots in store for you today. Uh, so once again, I just wanted to mention that we are part of the Nature Canada team. Uh, Ted and Ben are two of my colleagues on our Urban Birds team. And if you want to find out more about Nature Canada, uh, I would definitely encourage you to tell your parents to look at our website. Um, it is www.naturecanada.ca. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram uh, if you want to see lots more photos of birds and other wildlife as well. So thanks so much. And thank you to Ted and Ben. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. guys.